David, you're American, right? Yes. All right. So when you were a teenager, what was your biggest secret? Ooh, I peed my pants on a church uh, field trip and didn't tell anyone and threw those jeans into a river. Can I just say, I wish that's what this show was about instead. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bottle Episodes. Welcome to Bottle Episodes. Uh, uh. Falling in love. Welcome, well, uh, welcome to all episodes. I'm I'm Daniel Crow, fan of of urinated jeans going in the river, and I'm David Piccolomini, fan of urinating in those jeans. Okay, and we're joined by Molly Cornfeld. Hello, I I enjoy any story about peeing your pants. It happens more often than you think, you know. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah, we just try and hide it. That's usually I. One time, I literally I wasn't drunk. I was twenty. Okay, I was living at NYU for the summer. I left my friend's house at like 9 p.m. And I was like, I'm going to walk because it's a nice night. And like a block after I left her house, I was like, I have to pee so bad. I should have peed at her house. But Mm -hmm. instead of going back, I was like, I can make it this 25 minute walk. But it was 9 p.m. Nothing was open. A block from NYU. I just peed myself. I just peed myself. Really? Yeah. Wow. I could not hold it in. And you nothing like, was open in New York City at like 9 p.m. in Chelsea. Like all these. I mean, I wasn't 21, so I couldn't oh, get into a bar. Oh, there we go. Okay. So but I was, restaurant. It's New York. You can pee on the street anywhere. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to pee on the street. <laughs> yeah. Do it in your jeans. I, yeah. I did. And like, thank God, none of my roommates were home. And I just like put them in the sink and then washed them. Put them in the sink. <laughs> Yeah, there is a good metaphor for secret life of the American teenager, though, <laughs> because you had this secret shame that you tried to keep from your friends. Yeah. But, you know, eventually it all the truth came out here <laughs> on, on, a pod- yeah. on, on a podcast. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What what was the like? Did you just keep walking normally and then just let go? I was like I was holding it and I was like running. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I cannot hold this anymore. And I just stood there and peed. I, we're, it was 9 p.m. in Chelsea. Were people around? No, I was now by the dorms. No one was really. I mean, it was dark. Like, I don't think What's anyone. What's the cross street? Where was I? I was like on 10th Street and University Place. That hmm. still seems like a pretty busy area yeah. at 9 I mean, p.m. People probably saw me. It was a, tu- like a Tuesday or something. There's, <laughs> there's almost certainly a Chipotle you can get to very near there. That would Listen, have been open. for some reason, I don't know what was happening, but I it couldn't. Just, no, it's that panic emergency. You weren't thinking straight. Yeah, and I was like, should I just get on the subway? Will that be faster? But the subways were like 10-minute wait times, and I'm like, by the time I get on the subway... I'll be peeing myself on the subway, exactly. and that's way worse. You can't. I'd rather pee myself on the street than the subway. It is funny that we're going to judge a piece of television now. <laughs> well, I mean, you can still, I can pee myself and still know garbage TV. Can yeah, I yeah. just say that only God can judge this show? <laughs> yeah, great point. Great <laughs> point. <laughs> I, I, okay. Let's start. Yeah, the secret life of the American teenager. I think this show is supposed to be Christian, yes? <laughs> so it's supposed to be but, but it makes christians seem like the least cool well, people I don't of think all really, time they all end up having sex yeah which so, is weird because i'd say 30 percent of the words in the show are don't have sex well it's also weird that they're so like i mean 15 kind of young to be like that horny uh, right what they were so horny they the, well, okay and do you know who's actually horny brenda hampton she should be on a list the creator I of this would de- show. Would describe this show as smut. There's no <laughs> other way to describe it. It's 45 minutes of just a bunch of 15 year olds going, <laughs> sex, 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 sex. Okay. It was a lot. It, this show, you know what I, for, wait, do we just like. We can just start talking. Say whatever you want. Oh my God. I forgot about the dad molestation plot line. What? Wait, in the first episode. The dad molestation plotline? That the guy Ricky can't stop fucking girls oh, because right. he was molested oh, by yeah, his dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was not listening. I, the whole time I was like, that's Ernie Hudson. That whole scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah, wasn't yeah. listening. I was like, why is Ernie Hudson in this show? Because You know, he's the he's the other, the one black student's dad. Of course. Yeah, I, the two black I students. I assumed students, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did the show. They actually so, didn't write that. So this, it was this assumed. Is, this was that. me during that scene. Ernie Hudson's in this. 
has he always had an earring? And then I Googled Ernie Hudson earring <laughs> and I wasn't listening. Well, sorry. We were trying to figure out which dad molested, but it, we didn't see it. It was just he has sex with women because his dad molested him. Yeah. 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 That I'm good. Every time I meet a guy that has a lot of sex with me, I'm like, oh, so your dad molested you. Yeah. I mean, huh. David. Fuck. I'm yeah. going to have to think about this now. What did yeah. my dad do to me? I don't know. Think back on it. Uh, by the way, I have a fun fact. The first thing of trivia on IMDb about this show is, in most episodes, the word sex is spoken an average of 25 times. Oh, my God. Wow. 25. Wow. That's once every other minute. Wow. I mean, that makes sense. They're always talking about getting laid, these y- kids. They yeah. say it constantly. That's it- all they talk about. And it is almost with, like... There's no subtext. It's all just text. They're like, I want to have sex now. I'm 15. I deserve to have sex. Yeah. And it's like, how am I ever supposed to have sex when I don't have a girlfriend? It's like, can you fucking relax? It's you're 15. (laughs) Also, you know what I thought was crazy? And maybe this is just because I went to a small college and a smallish high school that none of these kids knew each other. It's like you're all within five feet at the lockers. You know what I mean? I mean, there are some schools where you're like, there are like a thousand kids. But I think... I think the first episode starts on the first day of school. Oh, is it the first day of school? I think they don't do a great job establishing because she has just come back from from band band camp. camp. Right. Okay. And these are like freshmen. Okay. So maybe they don't. Well, no, we know for a fact that one is a freshman. Ben's a freshman. Because the the guidance counselor is like, you're a freshman. But then we also are 15. I'm like, was this kid held back? (laughs) No, you're a freshman in 15. You mm, can be. It's unusual. I, I 14, was 13. F- 13, 14 would be the 13 would be a younger one, but 14 would be the normal but age. When I was a sophomore, I turned 16. But you started the year 15. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, yes, makes sense. Okay, so these kids, they're the school years are wrong. It's it's weird for him to be starting 15. Yeah, you're right. Unless you so but I think this year just started. You know what I think that is? So that's, that's why they don't know yes, each other. They also did it's a new year at the school. I think they're doing that kind of like jerry rigging thing where like, okay, they need to not know each other, so they're freshmen. Okay, so now they're fourteen years old. We're not having fourteen year olds have sex. Okay, they were so, all held back. So they're now they're all 15. super idiots. <laughs> we're just seeing the dumbest parts of this school's population. Yeah. <laughs> just being well, like <laughs> well, okay. Not all of them are dumb. There's that one girl who only exists to say statistics about teen sex. Oh my god, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Wait, was that guy her boyfriend? I thought they were brother sister at first. <laughs> no, 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 they're they're setting them up to, to be, date. Yeah, yeah. But okay. they're completely gone in the fourth season, the other episode. Oh we yeah, watched. They're, and and where where did all these adults come from? In the in the well, when a man and woman love each other very much, and <laughs> plus then they grow up and uh, it feels so like you didn't watch the show. Let's actually, we haven't actually said what the show is about. It's so, about a forty-five-year-old woman in her room writing the script and going, ah, "Yes, yes, ah." ah. <laughs> so, uh, starring a young Shailene Woodley, yep, a young Shailene, and that girl, Fran- Francia, the girl who plays the slutty girl. Yeah, you will have to be more specific on this show. Francia no, Rasa, Francia Rasa, she like hasn't aged, and she's still playing like a twenty-year-old and shit. Yeah, that is, is that true. so crazy. Because uh, I saw her in this, and I was like, wait, is that yes, yes? But she also looks like the girl in Euphoria. She looks like the the mean girl in Euphoria. Maddie, yeah, yeah. she does a little bit, but she was on. Y- grownish. Yeah, she's grownish, and, and then there was uh, another show. How I Met Your Father. Uh, uh, is, yes, is grown spelled G R O A N? G R O N W N. I was making a, a grown joke. It's oh. Probably bad show. Oh, I just assuming because she's in it. I've not seen it. It's fine. It's actually it, pretty cute. I let me. Like can it. I try the joke again? You guys laugh this time. Yeah, yeah, Give yeah, it yeah, yeah. Do it. Is grown spelled G R O A N? Nice. Yes. Big win for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you do spelling jokes, I'm not gonna. Get yeah, because that. I no. thought you said G R O. I don't know what you. I thought you were. I'm spelling. too stupid for spelling yeah, jokes. Yeah, I was held back twice so far. I could be in the show. <laughs> <laughs> what is weird is they are kind of believable as high schoolers in the first season, and then there's still high schoolers in the fourth season where we watch this other episode. But they have aged like ten years. Oh my god! Yeah, and they all have children. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. they all like keep getting. I'm like, why does everyone at the school have? You know, it was. The, you know, it's crazy in that first episode where the girls like, you go need to go to a doctor to consider your options, and the friends like, you're not suggesting an abortion. Abortion. It's like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. 
She's 15. Maybe suggest it. Yeah. It's, cra- it's crazy not to suggest it. Uh, not even regardless of where you feel on the issue at 15, it should at least be c- a consideration. <laughs> That's so crazy. So, yeah, the basis of the show is that the, the whole plot is that there's teenagers having sex. I don't know what else to say. Well, so the one's pregnant. because that's, yeah. that's yeah. what I rem- I did not realize how Jesus heavy the show was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I remember watching this as like a kid, uh, like not like as a kid, but like, you know, in my teenage and it being like, oh, this is the bad show with the pregnant teenager. But you say it's Jesus heavy. There are two Christian characters and everyone rolls their eyes at them. The party is at a ch- youth church event. But everyone thinks they suck. No, everyone in the show is like these guys suck, right? No, they aren't. They're they're like they do that weird thing of well, it's the first episode, so you can't start with them being the coolest people. Yeah, they have to build up into it. No one's going to church in the fourth season. No, they're all fucking in the fourth season. Yeah, yeah, they are all fucking, but in the fourth season, I don't know. But it's it's weird, Christian, because you could feel the seventh heaven on it. Yeah, yeah, well, you could feel it was very like. I mean, well, the abortion thing was, I was like, oh God, you're going to bring it up and then be like, but that's crazy. It's not crazy to have this 15 year old have a fucking kid with some drummer at band camp. Ricky, who was molested by his dad. Like there's just so much happening there. You know, (laughs) there was so much happening. A guy who actively is also, even the sex was kind of described as like, and suddenly it was just kind of happening to me. Yeah. I was like, that's how I felt watching the show. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot. That shows a lot. Can I just point out some very funny things about the budget of this show? Yes. Yeah, please. The like 10 minutes in that first episode just happened in a hallway in front of some lockers and they left the door open, which is supposed to show the outside. But it's very clearly just like a printed out image of outside. Yep. And you can see you can see where it connects to the floor. It doesn't even go all the way to the floor. There's like a stand for it. And you see, keep seeing people walk in and out the door to immediately turn left because they can't go straight. And it's so obvious that this is just on a sound stage. Wait, I got to rewatch. Oh, I yeah, totally. Where they'll just, they have the picture up and yep. it's a little bit past the door so you can walk past it. And some people's houses, their windows that just look directly at brick walls uh, because they couldn't even pretend that they were in the middle of a neighborhood or anything. So funny. Yeah. Uh, also, just straight out the gate, like I, Molly Ringwald is an incredible. Was she so sings good. the theme song? I did know that. Yeah. Does she? Yeah, she sings the two lines of the theme what? song. Well, you know what ends up happening with her character since I just googled the whole show. Well, yes. it, we found Please. out she was divorced and had a kid in the fourth season. Okay, so she yeah, so she has a kid. With, so her and the dad split up, but then they have a she has a kid like at the same age as time as her fifteen year old daughter. Then the last season, wait, she, they get pregnant together. Well, I think she gets pregnant the next year. Oh, okay. So, so like, but it's like same age. Yeah, yeah. Like, um. Anyway, in the That's last, a good season two. Now the mom's pregnant. Now the mom, and then season three, the slutty girl gets pregnant. <laughs> yep. And then their baby dies. Oh, yeah. Jesus. That's why she's like weird, and it's like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trick my boyfriend into getting me pregnant. You know, um, <laughs> because her baby died, and then, but in classic the, in the, season we all know five, the mom comes out as gay you gotta fucking love it yeah gay mom but then the other mom was also gay the alcoholic woman who drank oh no, no spoilers yet you don't think no he, he was no we, talking we're talking about episode. the first episode before we go into that other one. Oh, i'm so sorry guys but it, it, i'm it, sorry i got but it's just there was another gay mom that's, two gay yeah. moms two gay moms well and I, I think that woman w- had another partner so there's that's three gay moms Wow. I have a friend I have a yeah. friend I need to call right now. <laughs> <laughs> Three gay moms. Buddy, you're you're you gotta get more moms. Yeah. You need more moms. Oh uh, god. So it is wild how horny Brenda Hampton is on the show. Like for she's just having teenagers say the word sex as many times as possible. And to the point where she's like, How do I make him hornier? The mom's now a lesbian. That's what we're doing. We're doing sex of all types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that we're like, wow, we really gotta bring in more issues. I mean, it wasn't enough that there's a pregnant fifteen year old and a guy molested by his dad. You really have to bring in other stuff now. The thing is the fact that she was able to pass this off as a family show is, is one that- of the greatest cons of all time. I can't like my. This is her porn. She wrote her own porn, 
and got it on ABC Family. Uh, my dad was always like, I can't believe like, well, I guess I was young when this younger when this came out. But when a Gossip Girl came out, my dad was like, I can't believe you watch Gossip Girl. That's smut. That's disgusting. But now watching this, it's like, I feel like this was kind of at least in Gossip Girl. They look like they're 25. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. These did just look like kids. They looked like kids. And they're like, I got to get laid, man. And for some reason, that's more believable than the Gossip Girl 20 year olds being like, Fuck me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I did like those impressions were exactly correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they sound. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was when they're like 15 and they're these kids, there is that weird sense of them like, like you're like, ugh, gross. I know. Because the sex isn't attractive or good sex. I like, will say, as gross as that was, the grossest part for me was when the. The guy made a burger at the buffet line at the party. That was disgusting. And he put what, uh, coleslaw and beans on a burger. Ugh. And I uh, just started stacking everything on the burger. And then that cupcake was also like on the burger. How'd you guys feel about the funny, the quote unquote funny guidance counselor? Oh, the like the mentor guy? Yeah. Oh, awful. Right? And that young girl trying to fuck him? That was weird. There's just that whole shit. It was w- weird because they were like, we saw him like, yeah, he works there. They were so excited just to see him. <laughs> you could go into his office anytime. But then that one girl was like, what's your name? He's like, Mr. Molina. She's like, Mr. It's like, do, who acts like that? Well, yeah. Who acts like that in school? Yeah, that's because the Mr. distinction is like, sometimes people will go, oh, Miss, to like see that a woman's not married. Yeah. She but you can't to... do that if they're a Mr. <laughs> you she don't like, know. what's your name? But like, who, what student would ever behave like that? Well, I think they're, that's what they're trying to say about the school is that it's like a lawless sex zone. That That's like, a better name for the show. Lala Sex Zone. Lala I'd watch Sex it. Zone. <laughs> Brenda so, Hampton's novel series, Lala Sex Zone. It, you know, other part was hilarious when he, the football guy makes out with a slutty girl and then the swiftness with which every single person at that dance is outside well, immediately. Okay. Okay. Because the Christian uh, girl's brother who has Down syndrome yes. walks into the hallway and just goes, and then everyone runs to see what he's but immediately, screaming but at. But they don't even, he doesn't even finish screaming before they're all yeah. literally right there. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. everyone. Yeah. And also, they're standing next to each other. There's not, like, if they had just played it not immediately guilty. I know, they're just like. <sighs> oh, it's so weird that you caught us kissing. And it's I, and yet, that's how they act. It's so weird. But would you go towards that nondescript honking sound? <laughs> it wasn't like you said, oh. He said every- grace. Did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now cut this out because I look like a terrible person. <laughs> no, but you couldn't really hear it. It okay. was, it, he just, it I was like a visceral up. scream. Even if it is just her name, why does everyone run to well, her exactly, name? Everyone came out so fucking fast, except for, I just can't imagine you're a pregnant teenager and you're like, you know what I'm going to do? Go on a regular date. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who has the, I wouldn't even be going to school at that point. Like, I'm like, aren't you dealing with. I love that the new plan is to trick a different guy into thinking it's his kid. That's crazy. I think she kind of shoots that down, right? Well, so no, she, uh... she ends up telling in the first. So I've seen this show. I saw the whole first season. So in the first season, she ends up telling him and he's like before I think like before she tells her family or whatever. And then he's like, I'll marry you and say it's mine because I love you. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. More like the secret life of the American cuck. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, okay. So he he does the he pretends it's his. Well, no, or, because then every and then she's like, no, I don't want to do that. And then she that guy Ricky finds out it's his, and he's like, I'm gonna do anything for my son. But the funniest thing that happens, including and, molest up, the cycle yeah, continues. The cycle continues. Well, you know how the show ends? Since I googled it, how? Oh, uh, the little kid is shaking a snow globe at the end, and it's all been in his mind. Um, no, that would be that that would be better. So. Amy and Ricky, the parents, are like, we're going to elope. And then they're like, actually, we're not. We're going to have like a real wedding. And then they're like, actually, we just love each other, but we're not in love. And I'm going to go to college in New York, Amy. And she's like, but I can't, I don't know if I can go to college in New York. And Ricky's like, I'll take care of the kid these four years. Go have a life. And then she goes to New York and she's in the same building as ex-boyfriend lover Ben. They're in the same college dorm. I guess he kicked his alcohol problem. And uh, And then Ricky's like... She lived happily ever after, son, and so will we. And that's how it ends. The last line. So she just abandons her kid? Yeah. For college for four years. And then she'll be back. 
Man, oh. she will have missed so much. I, I Wait, fucking know. That's not what happily ever after means. Also, that's not what those words mean. But, it's, but he literally says she'll be okay, but also we will. So it's like, is she not coming fucking back? After? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Happily ever after implies that you won't get to experience it. Yeah, I, I don't know. But that's how it ends. <laughs> and so I guess we're, we assume she's going to end up with Ben. Or just aband- abandoning her kid? I have no fucking idea. She just Dana Day-Lewis's monologue from There Will Be Blood. Of, <laughs> I, I Screaming, I abandoned my child. So, uh, fun fact about the show. Shailene Woodley uh, had struggled a lot being on the show because she disagreed so much with its values. Really? Yeah. But, yeah. like, early on, it was fine or whatever. And then as it went on, she, like, had trouble, like, being on the show. It really struggled with it. Like, as like... Out, like openly shit talk the show <laughs> i mean it, it was so stupid you know it's another great plot point in season two this is when i stopped watching the show but i should have kept going the christian girl fucks her boyfriend and then that same night her dad dies in a plane crash and she's like i killed my dad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then she struggles with that for a really long time that's during her father incredible right hilarious so there's so much this, weird this stuff is what i'm talking it. about the christian value thing is because even though they're all having sex it's not working out for them it's actually not going well no neither was the show this show was on for five seasons <laughs> sitting pretty though at a 4.2 on imdb or something at like 38 on rotten tomatoes it i don't know how it got these seasons my, no one seems to like it my sister obsessively watched this show. i think it was for like t- younger teens who are like this is what being a teen is yeah Exactly. If you're like a 12 year old, you're like, wow, Whoa. they're talking about sex. I guess a lot. I guess being a teen is very different for like girls and guys. Because when I was a guy, like I, the show that I saw was like, this is what being a teen was like, was like jackass. That made sense to me. <laughs> that's what teen boys do. They hit each other in the balls. No, and that's pretty authentic. One Tree Hill, baby. Oh, Never One saw Tree it. Hill. Good show. Everyone's 40, though. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Like, Also, that show, like, I'm always trying to put together the timeline, and it's so confusing to me how that guy has, like, two families. I, I actually haven't seen One Tree Hill. Oh, my God. You haven't? It's so stupid. It's the okay. most ridiculous show. Season three, they had a second tree. <laughs> two tree, huh? <laughs> For the two brothers <laughs> with the same father who live in the town. Oh, is yeah. that what the... he like? He like knocked up his high school girlfriend and then dumped her and then went to college and immediately knocked up his new college girlfriend, but then stayed with her. And for some reason, the original high school girlfriend hasn't left the town they all live in. Well, of course, that actually is pretty normal. Yeah, but then he moved back with his new family. So he's rich with his new family in one house. And then the bastard son and his mom are poor and live in another house. But then they're both like the two brothers are both like on the basketball team and rivals, romantic rivals also. Oh, not no, not they're not they're not trying to kiss each other. The brothers. The brothers are trying to kiss each other. No, no, no. Oh, okay, that they're makes... trying to fuck the same girls. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. That makes more sense. And they're trying to be better at basketball than each other. Yeah, this is already like it's one of those things where like I don't know if I want to watch that show based on like you know the little bit I've seen on One Tree Hill, but that is sounds like a much better show. Like there's enough there where I'm like, oh, look at all these intriguing. Things yeah, there's you so build. much drama, and it's not about Jesus at all. Also, like. <laughs> I'm... Hey guys, if you're enjoying the episode, don't forget to rate and review and subscribe to the podcast. Also, follow us all on Instagram. I'm DPIC Comedy. She's Molly Kornfeld, Molly underscore Kornfeld with a K, Daniel F. Crow. Uh, check out my YouTube special, Goblin King. A bunch of people have been watching it recently and it's got a bunch of views, so it went from like 33 to 40,000. Come check it out. Uh, I'm also releasing shorts on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A thing I definitely will not regret putting on a podcast at any point. Okay, yeah, that's everything. Okay, go back to the podcast. I don't understand the emphasis also, like, as the show goes on, on, like, people getting pregnant from sex. Like, there's no discussion, really, of, like, is no... Well, how do you think people get pregnant? Real quick. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) I don't know why none of these people are like, let's discuss birth control. Yeah, like if you're well, they keep saying condoms. But like, what, do, do people not know they're like? Do, are, the, are any of the girls on the pill? Like, what's happening here? There's okay. There's a weird thing with the soundtrack where anytime any sort of like the the guy asks about condoms from the guidance counselor, and then the soundtrack goes goes. Bloop, 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 bloop. It just treats birth control as like funny. I know. It's so weird. And the fact that she gets pregnant, her mom gets pregnant, then the other teenage girl also gets pregnant is like, is no one here wrapping it up? What's happening? I wonder, do you think this this whole show is like a psyop from the government to get the birth rate up? They're just like, 
I mean, honestly, but who was horny watching that? I was disturbed. I, the, the creator was. Yeah just, yeah, just her. Just her just getting beamed up. There's like a 20 minute scene just at some picnic tables with the, the Christian girl and her Christian boyfriend. Oh, yeah. And what? just him going like, let's just get married now, babe. Yeah, because he like, oh, wants to fuck so he's bad. terminally yeah. horny. Yeah. Yeah. He is he is asking every question to being like we could get married right now yeah, or yeah. like during college or like and she's like nope my dad did it this way so this is how I have to do it and they waited which they didn't oh yeah but, no like, way in hell parents just tell the kids they wait how weird was it with the other family when the dad's like you want you you want to show your belly button because you want to dress sexy you're not sexy you're thirteen I was watching whole... I was like come on build your daughter up <laughs> a little bit <laughs> you're get fucking her, ugly bitch get her some self confidence. <laughs> You want to wear a belly button shirt because you're trying to get fucked right now at 13. That's what everybody's thinking when they see that belly button shirt. They're like, you didn't break the rules of school. You broke our values. It's like, relax, George. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, it's so funny to see that character still exist. When like he was par- like the parody of that character was like in Freaks and Geeks, like in the 90s. Oh, I've never seen Freaks and Geeks all the way it's through. It's great. But the dad is just like doing that exact same. Ah, oh, you want to smoke drugs? I guess you're trying to steal all of the meth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like classic TV dad that has no real personality. Yeah, he's just angry all the time at anything anyone does. I think he ends up in the in the at the show ends with the Christian mom. He um he ends up happy. I think with the Christian mom, yeah. Oh, I hate that. I have to bring up something crazy that happens in this first episode that I nearly forgot. What? Do it right now. All right. So Shailene Woodley goes to the pediatrician, right? Oh, yeah. I love that whole scene. The whole scene is just full of people with their babies. It's like baby day at the pediatrician's office. And And she sits down. By the way, most days are baby day at the pediatrician's office. Yeah. (laughs) So she sits down in the waiting room, and this random woman just hands her her baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, John Mayer's daughter is playing. John Mayer's daughter is playing. And she just hands her her baby, doesn't say anything, just gets up and leaves. And when this woman leaves, she's not pregnant. When she comes back into the room, this woman is pregnant. Really? Yes. You can watch the scene. She leaves not pregnant and returns pregnant. We're going to pause and watch that scene. That's how often people get pregnant in this show. A woman (laughs) leaves a waiting room to go to the bathroom, comes back like six months pregnant. That was holy shit. We just That's watched so it. That's so funny. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Sorry. Were these Can filmed... you hold this baby? I have to put another one inside. Yeah, Were yeah, these yeah. filmed six months apart? What happened? <laughs> they had to do a reshoot. What? Well, the baby hasn't changed, though. No. The... I, I think they were just, they were just, maybe they forgot that she was, I mean, they stuck something up her. I have like, it no, must have been a like, fake stomach, what? but. If that's her baby that she hands Shailene Woodley, yeah. she would have had to like give birth, immediately gotten pregnant to be at the level of pregnancy that she is when she returns from the bathroom. She's on her way to Iris Twins. Yeah. 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 I love the idea this is like a super fertility center or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The amount of the amount of like, li- but it's also none of these kids are like kids age. They're all two. You know what I mean? It's all babies. Yeah. Oh, it's all. Yeah. The tiniest it's like also yeah just the whole john mayer song over it like it was so ridiculous it's all it's so like she's gonna be a mom she's pregnant girls become mothers it's so wild so yeah uh, the one kid uh he decides it's gonna be his mission to fuck shailene woodley's character yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. because she's attainable yeah 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 he she's looks at literally her really average and she's like he's like she's not bad or what does he say I think I, he says to the guidance counselor that she rejected him, so now he has to have her. But before that, when his friends are like, "What about her?" He like looks at her and he's like, "Oh, she's kind of cute. She's fine. Yeah, she's av- she's fine. She's attainably hot." Yeah, that was the vibe. That was literally they were like, "Listen, this blonde Christian girl is definitely not going to fuck your goblin ass." Yeah, yeah. But she well, Woodley- wait two seasons and then she'll anybody. Yeah, <laughs> fairly. Oh yeah. Uh. And then she, uh, and so he then tries to get into band. Yeah. So he can get out of PE. And impress her. And impress her. And apparently he immediately tells her he w- joined band for her. Because her friends are like, he joined band for you. So like, he'll definitely just 
raise your baby. How did no. they know that he joined Banff? He must for have her? immediately told her, "Hey, yeah. I like you, and I joined Banff." Yeah, for he you. does. He does tell her. Yeah, yeah. it's like you're so fu- you're so dumb, guys. When he joins band and learns to play the cymbals, is that an example of symbolism? <laughs> but um, ching. No, 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 no. I think this is the only time you guys haven't given a joke what it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna have to ask. I'm gonna say that joke again. <laughs> no, uh, so then, yeah, he's with the guidance counselor. Uh, the, yeah, the guidance counselor. I really want to talk about how the adults talk to kids in general. Yeah. Because they just, they talk to them like they're adults. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Or, you have to understand it's written by a woman that's horny for 15 year olds. So this is how a woman horny for 15 year olds would talk to 15 year olds. Yeah. But they, yeah, they just talk to them like, like weird. Like there's no respect in like any of their deference in the high I school. I wouldn't respect any child that agreed to be in this show either. <laughs> <laughs> they are not deserving of respect. Uh, Yeah. So they do that. And then they keep, Doing the runner of their going to be condoms at the school, which there should be. Yeah, there should be condoms at the school. Like, I don't know why this guidance counselor is against. Con- I've never. I don't think I've ever met a guidance counselor for over one year who would be against condoms. If you talk to kids, you're like, yeah, they shouldn't make more of these right now. Also, when they they were really hyping this guidance counselor up because the first time we hear about him, two girls walk in like, I saw him. I saw the hot guidance counselor, and we see him. He's like, he's fine. Yeah, yeah, he's he's fine. He's a normal looking guy. But yeah, the horny girl's really horny with him. But why? It's Hollywood. You can cast a ridiculously hot guy to be the guidance counselor if that's his defining trait. On this show, though, he's just a normal looking guy. They didn't have the budget. Yeah, for they it. didn't have the budget for a really hot guy. You're right. There's not a million hot guys employed as uh, uh, waiters in L.A. <laughs> at any given time. Uh, well, could they act the bare minimum? I think <laughs> no. No one in this show could. <laughs> No one in this show it could. Actually, it was surprising how much, because like, uh, what's her name? The mom. Molly uh, Ringwald. Molly Ringwald has been great in a bunch of movies. Yeah. Well, there's a reason she stopped showing up in a bunch of movies. Yeah, apparently. And yeah, it was like, oh, it's stilted. It It is like, it's weird when you can hear like the reading lines off a script. Oh, yeah. And everyone talks like that because the lines are so ridiculous. How do you say them with any like believability? It is it is rare that you see a show where you're like, wow, like you can feel the lack of editing in the scripts. The girl talking about her promise ring and Jesus, anytime they spoke like about Jesus, it never seemed sincere at all. It was always kind of like, are you guys mocking Jesus? You know what I mean? Oh, that's interesting because it feels like it's trying to it's not not be insincere, but because the things they're talking about, usually they're just kind of saying them as like facts. Yeah. So it seems like. Because culturally, it's supposed to seem normal. Right, right. But so, no one talks like that. So it's so crazy. Yeah, and that, it sounds ridiculous. When he, well, that one's, oh my God, the scene where he goes, um, where he's like, he you find out the football boyfriend cheated. And then he's talking to the slutty girl. And he's like, I got, we got to pray to God, pray to Jesus with me. You're like, what? Like, it seems so. Yeah, she looks at him like, what are you doing? But he also seemed to not really believe it, you know? So you're just like, what's going on here? Every, every time there is That's discussion. That's also just bad acting. Yeah, no, I think it's bad acting and bad writing. They're e- just like, you're just like, none of this is realistic at all. Every time there is discussion of God, it feels more like a parody of a exactly. Christian show it than an actual Christian show. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we're seeing is, one, it's 2012. Or not, to, is it? It would have been like 08, 08 in the first season. So it's 08. So it's a very different time period in America, mm-hmm. too. So there were large swaths where this was the norm. And the woman who wrote Seventh Heaven is going to have a lot of God talk. Like It's funny what it's because I actually I got like weird chills at a couple points. Like when the blonde woman was like uh, she the blonde student, she was like trying to recruit everybody to the like after church party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like or after party at the church. And I was like. Oh, yeah, that's how they get you. That's how they do it. They throw parties like that that seem like they're fun. And You're they're telling like, me I can put beans and coleslaw on my burger here? This Jesus guy's all right. The Jesus. Literally, though, they'll be like, hey, we got an ice cream stand and stuff. Suddenly, Daniel's like, you know what? All right, I'll check out your church. Time to convert. <laughs> yeah. Oh, honestly, buddy, you would have a blast in Mormonism. They love sugar. Mormons, write me. Let me get these cookies or whatever you got. Yeah. <laughs> Like I went to a Mormon wedding and there was no, it wasn't, there was an ice cream bar that was like Damn. hardcore and just people just mainlining soda. Uh, yeah. It's new for them. They're just now allowed to have soda. Well, no, they could have soda, just not caffeinated soda before. Oh, the root beer freaks. Yeah. That's how I'm going to call all, I'm going to call all Mormons root beer freaks from now on. 
Yeah. I know nothing about Mormons. Oh, yeah. That's a whole thing. It's like coffee. Oh, yeah, God. no caffeine, no alcohol, no drugs. <sighs> the coffee would really get me. I could never be a Mormon. I'm out. <laughs> that actually is what takes... They're very productive without it. It's really incredible. Okay. Yeah, they managed to make Napoleon Dynamite without caffeine. How crazy is that? Actually, that one makes the most sense. <laughs> 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 that one is so low energy. that. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think we said all we can about this first episode. Uh, yeah, and then I guess... Yeah, it ends guess with them dancing. She's like, I'm in love. It's like, you're pregnant, bitch. What is happening? It's crazy that they're like, you can... Okay, maybe it's not crazy, but the fact that this whole vibe is like, you can be pregnant and still have a totally normal teenage experience. I'm like, can you? Can you? Well, I guess this is also 16 and pregnant is... Uh, oh, I've never watched 16 and pregnant. But that's this is the time period. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. And also within that, it's not to say that you can't live a normal... Oh, obviously, you can't live a normal life uh, or, you know, quote unquote normal, whatever. But you can... Like, it's wild that, like, abortion is so off the table, but tricking a man into raising a child he didn't conceive is like a a strategy that they're considering yeah it's it's bizarre that is what like that's the world they live in is they're like this get the worst possible option but a 50 year old with a child and i'm sure they get into it later in the first season but the fact that also no one's like adoption oh yeah i'm sure that i think it does happen as i think actually in the first season she thinks maybe she's not gonna keep it but then she's like i'm gonna keep it if i was her mom i'm like you're gonna keep it well good luck raising it (laughs) are you kidding me because yeah the mom has to raise it yeah exactly that's a baby. It's and she has to go to school. Exactly. Uh, and cl- luckily, she's got her mom and then her cool boyfriend in the fifth. Season. I mean, when you put it that way, the best time to have a baby is high school, so you don't have to raise it. All right. I'm- hey, kids, listening to the podcast, <laughs> I got a message for you. Have kids. Make your parents raise them. Live it up, dude. Party time. All right. Think about it. if you have a kid at fifteen. You have a, when you're 30, you have a cool 15 year old you can hang out with. Yeah, yeah, they keep and you then young. She gets I'm at, speaking as someone that's 31, when I was 30, all I wanted was a cool 15 year old to hang out with. You're gonna want that cool 15 year old, everybody. <laughs> when they're 20, you're only 35. Oh man, that the the dream. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> Uh, well, but if they have a kid at 15, Whoa! <laughs> 45, 30, 15. Oh, the trifecta. The tri- that's, a, that's a fun hang, you know? Yeah. Three generations. I have been in green rooms with that exact age breakdown before. <laughs> yeah, that actually, <laughs> yeah. with a 15 year old? I mean, I started comedy when I was 19, so close enough. Yeah, fair okay, enough. Okay, fair, fair. We found out a comedian was lying about his age. Uh, he was he's, he was 16 when he started, but he told us all he was 19. You don't need to say a comedian. We t- Josh has been on the podcast and we discussed the oh, on fair, his episode. Okay. Josh yeah. who? Talentino. No, no. He goes by Riesgo now. Oh, okay. Stop dead naming him. Oh, he was 16 and he told people he was No, 19? he was like 15. Oh, he, he is little. Yeah. Yeah. So how old is he really now? Who knows? 26? Something like that. Oh, okay. So it was one of those things where we did the math and we're like, hey, buddy, hold on. How were, how did you... Yeah, because I, I don't drink and I was giving him drink tickets. Like, I have nothing morally against giving a 19-year-old drink tickets. But then I found out I was giving a 15-year-old yeah, drink wow, tickets. That's, that's that's, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, yeah, very yeah. different vibe. Very different vibe. It's funny that he was just going to high school after hanging out with us. That is so bizarre. Talk about the secret yeah. life of an American yeah, teenager. That's a better <laughs> show. Yeah, a, that is a better show. <laughs> I mean, not a high bar to clear. I don't know if that's a good show of the guy sneaking out okay, to stand well, up. You know, actually, you know what? That is a pretty good show. Yeah, yeah I'd watch it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the second episode, though, because it is one of the greatest twists I've ever seen. What was the twist? <laughs> when they open up the door to a fancy office and guess who's in charge of the business? <laughs> Her brother with Down syndrome? And it's not explained. <laughs> yeah. Well, it may have been explained. That's true, but it's not explained in this episode. And yeah. I guess he works alongside one of the guys from The Sopranos? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Who's in the show now? Who? I didn't understand this this woman and her children that are living with him. I think... Well, I mean, it was... We did skip three seasons. Yeah, well, but... They, yeah, they the, say they live in his guest house, so he's doing very well. Yeah. He has a very successful business. No, I think he lives at home with a mom, and she has a guest house. No, they said in his guest house. Oh. Yeah, she lives with him and is like very, like, because there's that weird thing where, like, I was like, are they dating? Yeah, yeah. And the, but then he's like, no, he's like, I'm not ready for your family. I'm going to set her up with my coworker. 
Well, but I think they're doing, yeah, they're doing like that cute, like weird thing you do with like where you're like trying to be sweet about it, where you're like, I might have to date him even though I'm with the most handsome, smartest guy in the world. Yeah, but they weren't, they're not together. I think she's just living in his. Right. Yeah. So that's what, but the language is more affectionate because they're not dating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very bizarre. But yet he had a framed photo of her in his office. Yes. That made that whole concept, that whole plot line. I was, I was lost. What is he CEO of? <laughs> <laughs> the business seems to be doing great, but they don't tell us what he's. They just open up this fancy office door, and he's there, and he's like, P- "Papers on my desk by two p.m." Yeah. <laughs> like, what is going yeah, on? It is crazy. The the uh, the synopsis for this episode is one sentence that's just Grace tries to fit into Daniel's college world. That is the least important <laughs> thing in this episode. That is the there's, least. That is there's maybe a college the admissions one. woman trying to sleep with a high schooler. Yeah, threatening him. <laughs> there's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, what else ha- Who else is in the, well, oh, okay, the, the alcoholism the plot al- line? Yes. The al- okay, so it seems like, okay, I didn't understand this alcoholism plot line because they're like, Ben, you have a problem. It's that he got drunk once. Is that it? Oh, They were like, the first time you drank, you got drunk. And she's like, I'm an alcoholic, so I know. And then she drinks, which makes no sense. It was a $300 bottle of wine. She's not going to just leave it. And then she, but then she Buddy. was also like with that other woman. But then she's also... The kid who got molested's mom. But also somehow the guy from The Sopranos is in that plot line as well. <laughs> he's he's just... involved. No, because well, he's the dad of someone, I think. He's Ben's dad. He's Ben's dad. Okay. So then Ben brought her back to his place because she blacked pinned out. Note to her. And pinned that. What? That made no sense. They never show time. you what the note says either. No, they do. It's like, sorry about this. I didn't know where to put her. And then it's like, oh. I also, I didn't drink. Oh, he said that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was trying to read it. And I couldn't find where it was like zoomed in on it. Also, none of these kids live with their parents anymore. They're like supposed to be 17. There's also one one group of the kids are like, we're only pretending to be married, but we're actually really married. Yeah. So they're married on paper, but they're and they're pretending to be married, but they don't actually like each. They're just friends now because their stillborn baby died. Oh. They're the ones who had the stillborn baby. Well, that will that actually does end a lot of marriages. That's yeah, like so very famously a thing. She he's like, I don't want to. I can't do this anymore. And she's like, I need another baby. That's all. But I'm back. Put another baby. But they're you also, know pregnant like women seventeen. Yeah, you know how women are usually so excited to get get pregnant again after uh, giving a stillbirth. Yeah, especially when they haven't finished high school. <laughs> you know, <okay>. What? <laughs> if this joke is out of line, just cut it out. Okay. It feels like by this point in the show, the brother with Down syndrome was also writing the show. <laughs> because that explains why he's CEO all of a sudden and explains the nonsense of all the other storylines. I also, I love the idea that in this show that's like Christian, this is the most woke casting I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, but also I will say this, uh, and props to Secret Life of the American Teenager for focusing and centering uh, a Down syndrome character with played by an actual Down yeah, syndrome person. Yeah, that's what I remember when this came out, and it was an actual person with Down syndrome playing a person with Down syndrome, and I was like, okay, good on you, you know. It feels like they kind of use him as a prop, though. Oh, which is a little for like, sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, it, it's not like a human being with like full thoughts and feelings in this show but none of the characters are so i don't think that really changes every single character is two-dimensional one dimension they want to have sex the other they don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it They're, is funny they either want to have sex or not it is funny that chili woodley is like the star of the show but she is like in not a lot of it oh because when this i checked the dates on this this comes out early 2011 so she's probably actually filming the descendants Oh. While this happens. So she's like checked out. She's like, I'm about to be a movie star. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna David I'm working Russell. with the guy that made sideways and George Clooney right now. I don't need you guys. I'm hanging out with Jim Rash. Yeah. So she's probably not there a lot during this season. No. Uh maybe that's why there were eighteen thousand characters. Oh yeah. my god. I was like, What who are all these characters? Uh I can we talk oh, we gotta talk about the drink cake scene with bad because so when he's the alcoholic, what they try to do, this is it's an AA thing. Friend of Bill is an AA thing. Wait, what? is it that? Am I making that up? No, you're right. Okay, oh, so, so that's... that's what so what he was doing is he sent so the guidance count the worst guidance counselor in the world sent Ben to go meet this woman and say uh that she's friends with Bill to get him into AA because he had drinks one time. 
And but who was she? She is the kid who got molested's mom. One okay. of his moms. I don't know if it's his foster mom, his biological mom. I don't know anything. Uh, so then that, so that mom. But it was feels sober. like a date between them. It's at a very fancy restaurant. All the interactions are horny for no reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then she runs into her ex lover. At the that oh, other yeah, woman. yeah, 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 yeah. But then also she sends the boy to go to, talk to his father in law. Yeah, and that's a weirdly horny interaction. Because the father in law's immediately like, "Can I buy you a drink?" And the guy's like, "What?" He's like, like, "Just JK. kidding." And then he's like, "You better not fucking leave my daughter." No, but then he's like, "Where's your wife?" And he's like, "She's a flight attendant." Like, you should know that's your mother in law. You should know she's a flight attendant. And then he's like, "I'm allowed to hang out with this woman." He's like, "Really?" It's like, "Yeah," because she's gay. They're gay. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you scream gay in the house. The dog barks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the whole scene is, uh, it's, I don't know, man. Well, okay, so then then it follows up because it's, the whole scene is so weird because the, the motive, character motivation switches like four times because I thought he was there for like to go find out about AA because I thought it was just going to be a, a scene where they lecture us about not drinking. And then instead, the the mom, they, they accidentally give a $300 bottle of wine to the wrong table. I think that happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, people never remember the table that ordered the fanciest bottle of wine available. It wasn't probably the fanciest, but a, a fancy bottle of wine like that. So they bring it to the wrong table. They pour a little bit in, and then he keeps trying to encourage her to drink it. Yeah, and then as soon as she starts drinking, he's like, no, don't drink yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He keeps being like, might as well drink it. If we got it, you should drink it. And but he's I like, thought he meant, like, might as well, I might as well, because I don't have a problem. Yeah, he's like, it's fate. Oh, yeah. but I thought he was saying they should both drink it because he kept having that weird flirty vibe with her. Yeah. And then she poured a little bit for herself. And then she's like, okay, the way the way she didn't even think about it. I saw, yeah, she was just like, well, well, it's that, it's that, it's a, it's an addiction thing. Where you're I like, recognize it. That's me when you put candy in front of my face. <laughs> oh, don't mind if I have all of the Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> Daniel, you're on a diet. Nah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just wake up, wake up, passed out drunk in a 17 year old's bed. I fully have just woken up and be like, what happened to all the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a whole box here. It's empty now. Daniel, I'm getting you to a meeting. No, no, unless it's a meeting for more candy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so then she just drinks the whole... And also, she only... I mean, I guess if you hadn't been drinking for, like, only two years, if she she drank a bottle of wine. Yeah. I mean, I guess she maybe ordered more afterwards. I think you can't consider yourself recovered unless you've made it an entire presidential administration. Uh, I don't I don't want to put that aside. But hey, alcoholics, else. listen up. <laughs> You're slacking. If you... Well, one year, good for you. But then she was like, I'm drinking it to teach you a lesson. It's like, so what's happening here? Oh, I'm going to make myself excuse. smoke oh, the whole okay. pack. Yeah, <laughs> that was an excuse. That was, uh, oh, this is really good wine. I'm just going to drink a $300. Yeah, she just took the bottle. Also, she says, and I'm not paying for it. Wow, she really went. She really was like, but it was so fun. I mean, I do not have addiction issues, I don't think. I think I know. Anyway, but the extent to which she's like, listen, this will ruin your life. This will ruin your life. Two seconds later, hey, we accidentally have this bottle of wine. You know what? I'll down it. Like yeah. her character changed in two seconds. You know what? I'll ruin my life right yeah, now. Yeah, I'll ruin my life right now. Very casually. Very casually well, ruining also, her life Also, right he's encouraging her to drink up until the moment she actually but drinks. But you're going to take a 16-year-old seriously? Well, but it's a weird. Well, that's the whole idea of the show. Yeah, you're right. I mean, she's also in her 40s at a two year. She's only two years sober. So yeah, clearly she's hanging out. she has really bad addiction issues. Again, that's the dream of the woman that wrote this show. To just hang out with kids all the time who only want to talk about sex. I don't know anything about her personal life, but just based on we watched. Why wouldn't you just go get like a coffee? Why wouldn't you go somewhere with no alcohol? You know what I mean? Yeah. But also, like, based on this and Seventh Heaven, I think she should be investigated. <laughs> Something's not right. She was, yeah. she was friends with, I mean, she cast the lead of Seventh, Seventh Heaven, Heaven, who is a, a, a child molester. Yeah. That, that was the least shocking thing to ever come out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, You're yeah. like, of fucking course he was. Okay. It all adds up. Uh, So then what else happens in this episode? Oh, there's the whole, we got to get to the meat of it. The whole... uh. So the guy, the guy got threatened. Ben, yeah, oh, no, Ricky, 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 the sexy molested guy. Yeah, sexy molested guy. He 
He's paying for the sins of his slutty past. Is he sexy on his own, or do you consider him sexy because he was molested? It, it's a it's a plus one modifier. Okay, all right. Uh, on it, uh, but you know he's he's got hurt and passion. Yeah, he has good hair too. In that first season, I don't know what's going on that season. Everyone, hair. everyone like a- between the seasons, they slim jimmed their hair. <laughs> it just like went up for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the football guy, he he chopped all his hair off. We never know what he was not in the episode at all. I think he was in the flashback at the start. A lot happens in the previously on. Oh, so <laughs> oh, yeah. much happened a lot in happens in the previous. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! But then still, I was shocked by things that we saw in this episode that were not mentioned the previously on. Like they don't mention how he's a CEO now. On yeah, previous- yeah, they don't. That's mention- important. You gotta let me know. <laughs> You gotta let me know he's CEO. Now. How? My assumption is that it was his dad's company and his dad died. Well, his dad does die. Remember, she kills him by fucking the daughter. What? The daughter has sex with oh, the plane crash the same night his dad. Her dad oh, that was her dad. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a religious girl. So then that's yeah, probably he probably that actually is what happened. He probably inherited his business. Yeah. So he. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Bobby. That's now. that's a Chris Farley movie. It is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's no rules that say you can't. <laughs> were you doing Air Bud right yeah, now? Is that what you were doing? Air Bud. But yeah. why not his wife? This show thinks people with Down syndrome are more qualified to run businesses than women. <laughs> That's not a good message. <laughs> I I love the idea that he's a. F- like a figurehead CEO, and there's just like a shadow government. But he's not a figurehead. He like people come into the office, they're scared of him. And he's like, on my desk now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the top rated episode. This is the uh, how episode. was this the top rated episode? That was crazy to me. I think it. I think Get it's it the, together. I think it's the special episode quality of like the alcoholism but i feel like every episode is probably like weirdly that. The, we did seventh heaven and the top rated episode was about alcoholism so it might just about be the kids drink? yeah yeah about kids yeah. drinking and drugs yeah, yeah people love kids doing drugs also um for content yes yeah. uh oh but oh so let's yeah the meat of the episode though is this guidance counselor who works at a co- or college admission yeah and uh, officer or something yeah who apparently quote unquote has issues Yep. They never they kept, elaborate. Yeah, they kept be like, she has issues. She says to the Ricky, you can't get into this college unless you fuck me. And he's like, no. And she's like, then you don't get in. And also, I'm telling your school that you tried to fuck me. And that's why you didn't get in. And he's like, I'm going to roll with this. That's fine. Yeah, we'll just ignore it. And I'll go to a different school. I didn't think I was going to get to go to any college. So like any other college is fine. And Shailene Woodley's like, no, bitches lie, and we need to solve this. Yeah, we are going to approach her with your son at the school and say, this is his son. But you know what's crazy is how nicely that story wraps up out of nowhere. The guidance counselor's like, yeah, so it turns out she's been doing this to a lot of people. And uh, her the guy in the neighboring office has heard her do this before. It's like, no one reported this. How long has this been going on? How does no one... And t- with a different student, so Ricky doesn't even have to be involved Yeah, and they're like, she's trauma. done it with enough other people. It's like, then how has this gone unnoticed? They said your neighbor hears her. How has this gone unreported for Do you so know long? how many things are going on in this town? Yeah, this town's a fucking wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the wild, horny West. I wonder if the fifth season... Better name for the show. <laughs> I wonder if the show in the fifth season just becomes a Christian show again. Like, it... like. Like a lot of people just couldn't come to G- like have come to Jesus moments. They're like, my life was so bad. I feel confident Jesus. that this show ends with the rapture, <laughs> <laughs> and the entire cast is left behind. <laughs> That's it. this is a so- it becomes a soft pilot into yeah. the next uh, uh, to a Left Behind series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, God, um, I would I would watch a Left Behind series done by Brenda Hampton. Brenda, Has she done anything else? Seventh Heaven, other than Seventh Heaven, in this. Um, presumably lived it up in a hot tub every day of her life. Man. Presumably hung out with a bunch of 15 year olds. That is true. Yeah. In her hot tub. Do you think she hang- hangs out with Dan Schneider or they're just, yeah, they just have a lot of similar interests. I think he's too focused on feet and she's no interest for her. Fair. So yeah. they don't really get along. That's fair. All right, Daniel, how would you improve the show? Uh, um, uh, child protective services. <laughs> Sent to the set <laughs> to keep Brenda away from them <laughs> and to just make edits to the script. Like, you can't have a child <laughs> say that, just cut things out. Uh, and then what, what show would you recommend? Oh, what show would I recommend? 
Um, when I was a kid, before it was ABC Family, it was Fox Family, and they would play a lot of reruns of Who, uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? So go go watch Whose Line Is It Anyway on that channel that this was on. Wait. Right. Yeah. <laughs> whose Line Is It Anyway? Just based on the channel it was on. Yeah. There you go. We all That's like fair. Whose Line Is It Anyway? All right, Molly, what would you... What would I change about the show? Oh, my God. I don't know. I mean... Uh, I feel like you have to there's you can't do everything and the kitchen sink you know what I mean let's cut a couple of plot lines are we really going back to you putting your pants in the kitchen sink <laughs> is that the callback yeah that was the bathroom sink actually. oh sorry <laughs> you just you know cut a couple of the cut a couple of the plot lines there's too many I get that yeah sometimes you know you're in the middle of your fourth season and you just gotta let it all out piss your pants put the pants in the in the yeah. bathroom sink yeah wash them out yeah come back brand new pants yeah exactly put them pee on the sidewalk sneak back into swipe your way into the dorm room and hope no one notices that you're covered in your own pee take the elevator up the elevator always shook and you always thought you were gonna die make it to your dorm hope no one's there wash your things and wash your dirty clothes in the sink then shower and then actually put them in the dirty clothes to really wash them well this is also good to know that you uh you wouldn't have made it anyway because if you gotten in that elevator and it been shaking i would have peed yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. you're like think about it now that would have also i mean i uh, it's a miracle i made it that far you know and that no one was home thank god no one was home <laughs> yeah that's the biggest that's so. really but this show had too much going on there's too much going on i agree and also, I wish the people were older and hotter so it didn't feel creepy watching it. They did get way older in that fourth season. They, they did, aged but up a still, lot. Like, it's still weird. Creepy. It's still creepy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For that reason, I would recommend like Gossip Girl or One Tree Hill because they are like even the OC because those people are 40. I would. Okay, here's, hear me out. Well, we should change the show. Make them Jewish instead. Just take it instead of It's Secret Life. This uh, show would be considered <laughs> anti Semitic. <laughs> If they were Jewish, <laughs> they're just going to like they have like a Purim party at some point. Well, you gotta love it. I think that I think that would really improve the show a lot. They would they would probably have a much the conversations around sex would be a lot more frank and a lot better than I, like I, I held off on a joke there. What, what was it? I'll tell, frank? No, well, no, no. Okay, sorry, sorry. Did I put, <laughs> did I ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> hey what's your show david uh and as far as shows if you want a horny show that deals with religion uh i would recommend it just came out the has been hotel it's oh. an animated show about a bunch of uh creatures in hell that have been set there because they're bad you know i felt like a creature in hell watching this show yeah. <laughs> can i change my show recommendations yes. yeah to catch a predator 